Hi, I'm Matthew Sherwood, a cardiology fellow at Duke, and today I'm with Dr. Judith Hockman, a senior associate dean of clinical sciences at the NYU Langone Medical Center. And today we're going to talk about uh, some NHLBI uh, funded trials, specifically the one that you run, the ischemia trial, um, that we're all kind of very anxious to see what the results will be in a year or two. So can I so ask? So am I, but it won't be a year or two. <laughs> <laughs> so can I ask you what the uh, what the design and rationale uh, in answering this very important clinical question of how we uh, should handle our patients with, you know, significant ischemia but stable coronary artery disease? So I'm delighted to be here. So the ischemia trial is really a follow up to Courage and Barry 2D. Um, to me, they were surprising trials in that they were negative. And regardless of the extent of coronary disease, for example, in Courage, Prox LAD, whatever, there's just no signal of any benefit of routine PCI early in stable ischemic heart disease. So you take that as one of the frameworks, and then you say, well, okay, you know, what, what went wrong? Or maybe it's not wrong, maybe it's right. But what are the potential um, new designs that one can develop that would get at certain subgroups that may be important and get rid of certain biases that may have happened? So specifically, there are some data that the more inducible ischemia you have, the greater the benefit from revascularization. That was shown by a classic study by Hakamovich et al. from Cedar sinai database. So we've designed the trial around at least 10% perfusion defect on stress nuclear scan or comparable stress echo or CMR findings. So that's one whole rationale for the trial, to test it in actually patients with ischemia, documented by a core lab. The second is the notion that all of the patients in prior trials, including FAME2, had visualization of the coronaries before randomization. So the treating physician, the patient knew the anatomy, and there may have been selection bias as to who got in the trial and who didn't. So a large percent, not 100, but a large percent of those in the ischemia trial are going to be randomized after stress tests without knowledge, recent knowledge of the coronary anatomy. So without a recent calf or, or unblinded CCTA. So those are two fundamental differences between ischemia and prior trials. Barry 2D Courage and other trials, Rita, Rita 2, there were a lot of stable ischemic heart disease trials that were negative. I think we're all really excited about uh, seeing what that trial will tell us. What we saw today uh, at the Late Breakers at AHA 2013 is really uh, several trials funded by the NHLBI, uh, which has, is a little bit different than previous years. I wonder what you thought about the future of clinical trials and whether you think the NHLBI will be a major um, coordinator and funder of trials going forward to answer important clinical questions. Well, I hope so, because we critically need them, right? I mean, the, the only alternative sponsors are private industry, pharmaceutical companies, device companies. And they fund trials that test their specific agents or, or devices. So for everything else, we need NHLBI to fund it. Um, or PCORI in the future. Now, we all know that the NIH budget is very constrained. So we've got to get very, very clever. And we have to design ways to do trials that are much less expensive, very real world. So the buzzword for the future are these large pragmatic trials. I mean, ideally, every clinician should be enrolling and randomizing participants after consent in their own practice using clinically collected electronic medical record data. And we could theoretically get the answers we need much more quickly. So you all know, because it came from Duke, that JAMA article about what proportion of guideline recommendations have an A level of evidence, and it was 15%. And cardiovascular medicine is way ahead of other fields, so we've got 
a, a real imperative to get the evidence much more quickly. So I'm optimistic about the future in terms of large pragmatic trials with uh, hopefully lower budgets. And we hope that NIH and NHLBI continue to get funding and more funding from congressional allocation. Well, thank you very much for speaking with us today. And to hear more about the future of clinical research and other science, please visit uh, the Duke Fellows Heart Blog online. Thank you.